Okay, so O5 concepts. How to draw a line between two parallel lines without having to trim. This is how you do it. I'm going to put in two parallel lines. Whoops! <laughs> Blame that on Nozad. There we go. Okay, here is my line. I can come over here and click this snap to nearest. And you never want your snap to nearest to be on your running snaps. You always want to get this one off your object toolbar, object snap toolbar. So click it, click here, and then because we have our polar setting on down here, with intersec intersection snap running, it's going to give us that. So we can enter and enter again. So again, you can see my end snap is pulling me over. This one's good for one turn. I click on the line, find my polar intersection, and that's it. Okay, if your polar was turned off and you just wanted to quickly do this, you could use near, I'll turn this off, you could use near and then go and get your perpendicular snap right there and click. I turn those two back on. Okay, if we have by default, we are always drawing on the zero layer. So everything that we draw uh, by default is on this zero layer. Sometimes we, well, we will always be working with layers. Sometimes we put things on the wrong layer. And first of all, I'm going to show you, actually, you know what, I'll just do a circle. And I already have a layer called circle right here. So how do I get the circle over there? I select it and I just click on the circle layer. And now my current layer is still zero. If I were to draw another circle right now, you can see it's on zero again. So when I put the circle over to the circle layer, it didn't change my current layer. It just changed the layer of this object right here. So if I needed to draw a whole bunch of circles, then I should change to it first. And then, every time I draw one, it will be on that layer. As you can see, the circle is still on the zero layer, but I can change it by doing that. Okay, if I want to copy an object, let's say I want to copy this object 10 feet over. First I select it, then I click the copy icon, then I click a reference point, and you can pick the middle of the circle if you like, and lock in to the direction you want to go, then type in 10 feet, enter, and there's the copy. If I want another one 10 feet away, I need, it's measuring from way back here, so I can't type in 10 feet now, I have to type in 20 feet, enter, 30 feet, and so on. To just do a copy by eye, you click the copy icon and just you know, click around wherever you want it. We know that we can move an object just by putting the cursor on a line, not a grip. Actually, this grip will change a circle, but if I just go on a line, I can pull that or text or any type of object around, but it's not very precise. So if I want to move this 10 feet over, exactly 10 feet, this is how I do it. I select it, come over here, that's the move icon. I pick a base point for a circle, this makes sense. I move it in the direction that I, I want it to land in and then I type my distance. I want it 10 feet and it's, it has moved 10 feet over. Okay, trim. Sometimes we like to trim lines and get rid of them, so I'll just put a few lines on here. So let's say that we want to trim this middle piece out. We are going to go and click the trim icon 
and then we are going to hit our enter key and if we had hit enter it's going to use this default select all I'm going to hit enter and what that means is that every line on here is like a sharp edge that can cut any other line so when I click now it's telling me select object to trim and when I click this one it cut it at this cutting edge and this sort of knife edge here so you just click the things that you want to disappear if you can't make something disappear then you will have to just select it and delete it with your delete key that's how you trim and rotation if I have an object that I want to rotate I can select the object and then tell it to rotate it's asking me for a base point and think of that as if you had a push pin and you clicked it here then your objects going to rotate around that point but if I select it and then go to rotate and select this quadrant point over here now you can see that it's like it's moving over that base point or around that base point so that's what you need to know so I can do it by eye or I can do it precisely this way select it click rotate there's two methods here I'll do it the mouse method first I'm going to rotate it from the quadrant point here and all I do is move my mouse until I lock into the angle I want and then I press enter and it's rotated now I'm going to undo that and I'll do it the second method select the object go to the rotate icon pick your rotation pivot point that's what they mean by base point and just type in the angle that you want so I'm going to do 30 degrees enter and that gives me an exact amount and that's it